Welcome to my studio. My name is Astra Gaia, and I'm here today to present to you the Witch's Kitchen Oracle Card deck. We're going to do an unboxing of this brand new deck I just got and see what exciting things the kitchen has to hold. And in honor, I'm wearing an apron, my kitchen apron, and uh, I also brought some crystals with me that remind me of, of what you might find in the kitchen. Now, some of these include, this is a citrine, and it's, it's a yellow citrine. I'm trying to lower the light so you can see it a little bit better. It's a citrine. It reminds me of citrus fruit, and we have an orange tree outside, and we've been harvesting the oranges, and so I thought we'd bring that in our kitchen. Secondly, I have this dendritic agate. And this is white with some black squiggles in it, a little bit of brown. And it reminds me of salt and pepper and you need some good seasoning in the kitchen. Thirdly, I have some rainbow hematite. It's in a little diamond shape. And it reminds me of copper pots, although it doesn't contain copper. Um, this is uh, hematite but it reminded me of pots and pans you might find in the kitchen so i thought we'd bring it with us and lastly i have a crystal point this is a clear crystal point and it reminded me of something you might stir the cauldron with or if it's a small cauldron or um even like a straw you might use so those are the crystals i thought we would bring with us all right here is the deck the witch's kitchen and I've removed the plastic wrapping so that it would reduce the glare on the cards. And this is an Oracle deck containing 48 cards. It's by Barbara Makel Johnfrey and Flavia Kate Peters and illustrated by Richard Crooks. And on the back, you can see it contains a guidebook set and the purpose of the card is to go back to your roots and harness the power of nature, to engage with messages and medicines of plants and herbs and invoke your inner kitchen witch. So how many kitchen witches do we have today who are interested in using a kitchen witch oracle deck? From root to tip, each card reveals remedies, salves, tinctures, lotions, and potions to create well-being in your life. Now, I like to make uh, tinctures, lotions, salves out of herbs that I grow myself and out of some essential oils. So this ought to be very interesting. So there, and the, oh, and it, it contains sample spreads and easy to remember and repeat invocations. Ooh, how exciting. And some factual information about each key ingredient. So let's open this box. Uh, uh. And the publisher of this is Llewellyn. Got the box open in the, to begin with, there's a book, the booklet. Let's take a look inside this booklet. Oh, there's an introduction. It's a little poem. Blessed be this humble kitchen and all that is gathered here during the travels of the moon and throughout the seasons of the year, from root to tip and all between, be it of fire, water, earth, or air, know what is intended, said, and done. It's from a source of authenticity and care. Under her watchful eye, watchful loving eye, and fueled by his passionate fire, craft what is needed to sustain and nurture with harm to none nor selfish desire. That's an anonymous poem that's included. And look, the contents. Whoa, this includes a lot of very common herbs that we use every day, and some we might not use every day, but I'm sure we've all heard of. This includes sample spreads, three card, three card spread, four card cauldron spread, and five card cauldron spread. So that's interesting. And what I'll do is go through each card and then I'll just talk, talk to you about the card messages. So let's, let's look at this. There's, there's a band around it. Let's take that off. 
this deck. It's it's silver gilted. Can you see the glare coming off that? That's beautiful. Beautiful deck. They're, none of them are stuck together, which is unusual for a lot of these Oracle decks. There's a beautiful cauldron on the front side of each one with a starry background, and it's got a, a pentacle on it. And I believe how they start, actually, um, is in alphabetical order. The first one is aloe vera. Soothe. How many people have used aloe vera and know that aloe vera um, is very soothing for burns and cuts? Let me try to zoom in on this a little bit better. Now, if you look at this card, I want you to notice there's a little black cat back here. And each of these cards, you're going to see a little black kitty cat and maybe doing different things in different cards. Notice there's um, some aloe in a plate, and this is what the aloe plant looks like. And see, this is the aloe juice coming out of a bottle. You can collect the aloe juice, um, and it, you can drink it to soothe your stomach uh, and, and things like that. <clears throat> so the book has a lot of information specifically about the plant. It's aloe vera soothe, soothing gel to heal the skin, digestive tract heals from within, inflammation, immune disease, my golden juice will bring you ease. This magic has worked with harm to none, so mode it be, there it is done. So I'm not going to read the entire book to you, but um, just know you can use this for um, soothing skin, you can put it into ointments, um, for lotions, and the plant is a succulent that you can that needs a lot of sun. It, it does well in dry conditions. And this is really interesting. And next we have apple, the forbidden fruit. Now let's look in the in this um, picture and see what we see. Oh, the cat has some sparkles around it. This is an apple blossom uh, from the apple tree. And here's a jar of apple cider vinegar. How many people have heard that apple cider vinegar is really good for you to drink every day? Now, I'm not drinking it. That It sounds like that would probably make me sick. But, <laughs> but some people swear by it. Um, this person is drinking some sparkling apple cider and, and eating an apple, an, an apple pie. Now, the apple uh, has a little poem. Do, don't ignore what is forbidden. One bite uncovers all that's hidden. Pentagram of seeds revealed, enlightenment now claimed and sealed. This magic is worked in harm to none, so mote it be. There it is done. Now, how many people have heard that an apple a day keeps the doctor away? Well, apple cider vinegar is recommended for lowering blood sugar and cholesterol. Um, but the apple is even more significant historically because it is in uh, the Bible and the story of Adam and Eve, and it's is the fruit that's been blamed as the forbidden fruit. Now, we don't know if that's really the same fruit that it was an, actually an apple, but that's what a lot of people uh, use as symbolism. So very interesting. All right, the next card we're going with is Arnica. All forlorn, extremely bruised, so sore in pain and feeling used. Give yourself some time to rest. My remedy restores your zest. This magic is worked with harm to none, so mote it be, there is done. So this is for recovery. And I can't, Arnica is a flower. Um, there You can get Arnica gel. And I believe I've gotten Arnica gel for soothing pain before. Um, it's You can put it into a sap for sprains, bruises, pain, and inflammation. Um, and this actually has a a recipe for that. So that's really cool. All right, let's look at the next card we have. Basil. Who likes Italian food? Well, basil is one of the herbs used to make give you that Italian flavor. I grow a lot of basil in the garden. It's really easy to grow. 
A lonely witch will never do. Call up a friend to share some stew. It's time now for a reconciliation. I'll prepare you for this celebration. This magic has worked with harm to none, so mood it be. There it is done. So basil's more than just for eating, uh, for flavor. It's, it makes a good stomach tonic. Um, it's good for digestive problems, stress, and detoxing. So that's something you definitely want to have in your cabinet, and it's easy to come by. Basil's a really good one. All right, next we have bay leaves. Bay leaves are for abundance. Now, this is something you see often burned in magical spells. And in the book it says, Don't give up or give in. Being rich is not a sin. Accept all gifts that come your way. Abundance is yours, now here to stay. This magic has worked with harm to none, so mode it be. There it is done. Um, so in the book, there's a recipe for shampoo that's recommended for dandruff, itchy scalp, and lice. I'm not sure that it's going to be effective for lice, but um, definitely uh, you should probably try the shampoo for if you have um, dry, itchy scalp. Um, bay leaves are symbolic. And the bay laurel was um, symbolic in a lot of the um, old, I guess, Greek or Roman um, drawings and the, uh, sculptures. And we tend to burn them in abundant spells. Next we have blackberry. Blackberry says invasive. Well, because, and probably because it is an invasive plant. If you grow a blackberry plant, it just, if, if it's doing well, it takes off on its own. You might even find wild blackberry in the woods. It just grows into this large hedge. Um, and it's really, the blackberries are delicious. If you like that kind of thing, you can make jams and stuff out of that. But the, the book says, Time to break free, boundaries in place, intruder, stalker, get out of my face. Thorny, sharp branches and berries of black protect from invasion to prevent attack. This magic has worked with harm to none, so mode it be, there it is done. So that's the spell that goes along with blackberry. So black, uh, black pepper is next. Black pepper is for banishment. And I have made... Um, protection powders that contain black pepper. I've certainly used it in banishment spells. It, it has a lot of good uses. It's actually good for you um, in your digestive system. So, and also you can make an incense out of it and there's a recipe for that in the book. Um, there's a little spell for that. I'm not gonna read every spell in this book, but um, definitely black pepper is, is a good one. It comes in little peppercorns and these are what you grind onto your food when you're tasting them. And this is what the pepper plant looks like when it grows. Isn't that beautiful? Okay. The next one I have is catnip. And look at the cat. Look how much closer the cat is. Look, I'm going to show you. Look, there's the cat in all the other ones. The cat was way back here. And now the cat's right up here. Why do you think that is? Oh, my cats go crazy for some catnip. And it's called bond. Now, catnip is not just good for making cats crazy. It is also good for healing um, some swelling for um, when you have joint swelling, rheumatism, any kind of soft tissue energy. And there's a recipe for a poultice for that. And it says that the ancient Romans used catnip for skin ailments, piles, fever, and sedation. All right, so let's see what we're going to learn about next. Chamomile. How many people have had chamomile tea other than Peter Rabbit? Peter Rabbit uh, didn't like chamomile tea, but I think it's delicious. It's very mild. Um, we use chamomile tea to help us relax, relieve anxiety, go to sleep at night. It's a good tea for night. And this is a picture of beautiful chamomile flowers. Now I try to grow some in my garden. I didn't do too well. Um, but it gets really hot here in Houston. They just burn right up. Uh, but here in the book, it says this herb has been used since ancient Egypt, where it was associated with Ra, the sun god. 
and it has been used in teas and tonics to treat malaria, which is hard to believe, and as a poultice for open wounds to stop the spread of gangrene. So it, it must have a lot of healing properties that I didn't even know about. It says it was one of nine sacred herbs from Anglo-Saxon times. So you need to get a hold of some chamomile. All right, next we have chili pepper. Ferocity. Oh, that's a spicy herb. Chili pepper. Now, believe it or not, even though you can't imagine getting something like chili pepper in your eye, but it, it, you can use chili pepper oil for natural pain relief natural congestion and boosting immunity. So there's a little recipe for that. Um, and you can use it to represent your passion uh, when you're doing a spell. Okay. Next, oh no, oh my God, it is chocolate, the aphrodisiac. Um, if anybody doesn't like chocolate, you can tune out now because this is my favorite. I, I wouldn't call it an herb though. It's it's a it's a bean. Uh, it comes from a bean, and it it's really delicious, as you know, in desserts. But it also has powerful healing effects, and um, we are doing we are planning to do some cacao ceremonies and cacao. Is, is the raw cacao bean before it's um, cooked at a high temperature, it has a lot of healing properties to it. And once it's cooked to a high temperature and then powdered and made into dessert and added a lot of sugar and butter, it's, it's no longer as good for you. But in the original form, um, just with some light roasting, that is pretty darn good for you. And did you know you can make a chocolate face mask? Hmm. There's a recipe in here for that. So that's enough said about chocolate. Chocolates, you gotta have that. All right, cinnamon. Ooh, that goes good with chocolate too. Cinnamon reignite. So this is about, cinnamon is, is really good in um, herbal spells. It, it represents a lot of things. It can represent protection. It can represent passion for things. And um, these are, are, it has a wonderful smell and it's just the, the aroma from the cinnamon itself uh, puts you into a different state of mind. So now there's a recommended recipe in here for remedy milk for loss of appetite, bronchitis, and sore throats. So you need to check that out. All right. Next one is cloves and clove goes pretty good with cinnamon in some recipes. I like to mix cinnamon oil or not cinnamon oil, clove oil and orange oil in with some other oil for my hair and it smells so good. So clove, gossip. Hmm. Let's see, why does it represent gossip? Whispers behind your back or a hushed silence when you enter a room indicates you're the topic of conversation. While there's no harm in having a good old chin wag with friends, bad mouthing is someone's private business should be avoided. My antibacterial properties are powerful enough to wash out any gossip monger's mouth. Be watchful of who you share intimate details with. So this, you can use clove, they're saying, to stop uh, gossipers. Very interesting, never heard that. Coriander. Immortality. Do you want to live forever? Now, coriander, um, coriander seed oil. I have some coriander essential oils. I haven't really used it that much in cooking, but I know you can use it in cooking as well. Um, they have a recommended recipe in here as a detox juice for fatigue, detoxing, mouth ulcers, and blood sugar. So, it can, it spirit, spiritually, it represents being indestructible. So you can use that in an immortality spell. Cumin, faithfulness. Now I feel like all the Mexican food I eat tastes like cumin. 
And I'm not sure if that's like a key ingredient in it, but um, it is a very powerful herb in a lot of ethnic cuisines. And I used not to like it, but now I like it. And I actually use it at home uh, in cooking occasionally. And I know that it has a lot of healing properties. Um, there's a recommended recipe in here for boils and psoriasis. But this, this spice has been used for thousands of years. And it used to be used in the mummification process in Egypt. Very interesting, isn't it? All right. Next is dandelion. Dandelion. How many people know that dandelion is not just a weed in your yard that people are trying to mow out? Um, it's not just a, a flower you can make wishes on either. Dandelion has some healing properties, you guys. But the wishes part is my favorite part because it is so much fun and I love seeing my children make a wish and blow the little petals off of the puff ball and they float away in the air. It's like wishing on a star. Um, there's a recipe in here for dandelion uh, coffee and certainly can make a tea out of dandelion and it's um, good for your uh, kidneys and bladder. Ignacia. I just got an Ignacia plant recently. I got two Ignacia plants and I was hoping that they would um, do well. However, it has rained like every other day since I bought these things. It's like a rainforest here. And apparently they don't like rain that much because they're not doing too well. But um, Ignacia plants are really good for building immunity. And supposedly the flower, you should use the flowers or the, and or the roots on the second year of growth going forward. And these are multi-year plants. So, you know, you don't want to kill the whole plant and one swoop just you just harvest part of the plant let it continue to grow and it's supposed to spread and everything um it, so ignacia really good for a spell as a protective shield but even better for a cold elderflower is elderflower the same as like elderberry i'm not sure there's the elder tree. I wonder if that's from the elder tree. This ancient hedgerow plant is protected by the elder mother who lives in its trunk. Ooh. The elder flower is used in Chinese medicine to purge fevers. Um, it's good for a diuretic and sinusitis. Oh, I just recovered from some sinusitis. So this one might draw fairies. Eucalyptus, breathe. Now, eucalyptus, I don't know if you've seen those eucalyptus plants. They have, they sell them dried, or they used to be popular a long time ago to have dried eucalyptus, and you could smell it in the house. It had a, a, a kind of a, a different smell. Well, eucalyptus, you can buy in cough drops, and it has a kind of a menthol-type essence to it, and it really does help, help open up the airways. Uh, really helps you breathe. I guess these are eucalyptus flowers. I've never seen the flowers. I've only seen the leaves. Interesting. The cat's staying far away from that. Cats don't like eucalyptus. I'll tell you that right now. Garlic. Repel. Nobody wants to smell your garlic breath. This is true. However, garlic's really good for you. All this stuff is good for you. They wouldn't put it in this deck. Um, garlic has antibacterial properties to it. And it's really good for, um, for fighting colds and infections. It helps with your immunity. It also has anti-inflammatory properties. Um, but certainly it will repel vampires. So you're gonna need some of that if you're around any kind of psychic vampires or real blood-sucking vampires. Ginger, feel the power of the ginger. Now ginger is one of the smells that's used in aromatherapy for when you're nauseous. It's really supposedly good for digestion. I don't particularly like the way ginger smells. Now when it's in gingerbread, that, that is mixed with cinnamon and a bunch of other herbs 
it has that cinnamon smell. Ginger doesn't really smell like cinnamon. Um, and it's a, it's a strong burning herb. So if you use ginger oil, it can burn your skin unless you dilute it with um, another oil. So keep that in mind. But it is very magical herb. And supposedly it can combat nightmares. Um, as well as, you know, taking advantage of the digestive properties and other anti-inflammatory and antioxidant benefits. So get you some ginger. I'm making, um, for Thanksgiving, I'm making some vegetable dumplings and I'm going to make a, a dipping sauce that has ginger in it, fresh ginger. Hemp. Ooh. So what is hemp? Has anyone heard of CBD oil? I actually sell CBD oil. Um, it is very popular right now because, you know, people use marijuana for um, spiritual journeying, and that's all good. But there's properties to the plant that are very healing and can cure a lot of autoimmune conditions, or not cure them, but give you relief from the symptoms and also relief from pain for chronic ailments. And people use it a lot end of life, and so there's that medical marijuana. But if you don't wanna smoke it, there's an oil that you can ingest. It's also very good for your skin. So there's, there's, um, there's marijuana and then there's hemp, and industrial hemp is what they use to make the CBD oil. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't necessarily have those uh, hallucinogenic properties, but hemp stands for expansion. All right, honey. You want to be my honey? Who's a big fan of bees? We used to like be scared of bees and shoo them away, and now we. We get them a blankie and some slippers and make sure they're comfy because we don't want to lose bees or we'll all die. They're helping save the planet. So um, without bees, we wouldn't have crops for food. And what is a byproduct of bees? They make honey. Um, so I, I'm vegan. Vegans don't eat honey, but I'm a big fan of the properties of honey. Um, it really helps to boost your immunity and it's, it has a lot of good uh, properties for wounds and infections. Um, there are antibacterial properties. Uh, so, and also you can make really good candles out of beeswax. So I think that if, if your honey was, you know, harvested um, in a way that was kind to the bees, and we're not killing bees doing this, we're, we're actually helping to prop up the, the bee population, then you're doing a good thing. I'm not so against having a little honey now and then. But do know, this honey that you get at the store, most of that isn't really real honey. It might even say pure honey and they're lying. You go get you some honey from a farmer, that a bee farmer, local honey. Okay, and that local honey, that can help you with, um, the. It, they use the local pollen and it'll help you fight allergies. Now, lavender. Oh, everybody loves lavender. You know what? I have lavender plants. They're, it's another thing that doesn't do well in Houston because of all the rain and the high heat. Uh, it grows really good up in the mountains, I noticed. Like up in Colorado, they have a lot of lavender. Um, but it's really has a lot of great properties. I don't like the way lavender smells. A lot of people use it as a, in the dryer um, to help give a really nice scent to their clothes. To me, it's too flowery, um, but it is really good for aiding sleep. And I help, I put some of this uh, lavender oil on the bottom of my son's feet or give him um, some Serenity, which is a, a doTERRA essential oil blend that helps you sleep and it's in a little capsule so you don't have to taste the lavender taste. But you can cook with lavender too. It's really um, versatile. It does help you with sleep and a peaceful sleep at that. And I noticed there's there's like a little salamander on all of these cards. I'm not sure what that signifies, but 
that's interesting that that's on there. All right, I'm gonna start a new row over here. Lemon. Life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Bitterness, it represents bitterness. Now, um, lemon has a lot of purifying qualities. You can, um, you can clean with it. It makes a really good cleanser. And if you mix it with uh, salt, it's even more powerful for cleansing. And in, in magic, we use that to, to clear away our resentment. Put that over there. Mandrake. I've heard of mandrake, but I don't I don't think I've ever been exposed to mandrake. Mandrake. It looks like um look at this. Isn't this cool? The mandrake root looks like what's important. It's a woody root. Alright. Impassive. Magic's wane, not impressed. Work with my root if you're distressed. Extraction causes a deadly scream. Work with me to follow your dream. This magic has worked with harm to none, so mote it be, there it is done. So, it's used as a personal visionary root. Ah, so I, I do shamanic journeying, but I don't use um, medicinal plants for that. And maybe that's why I haven't, I haven't uh, come across that. Interesting. Well, there's all kinds of uh, recipes and guidance on mandrake in this, in this book. You should really check that out. All right. Milk thistle intrusion. So any kind of thistle is very pointy, sharp. Um, and so I can see why intrusion is, is um, what it stands for. It actually has um, medicinal properties for liver and kidney complaints. And um, it, you can use it in spells to break bad habits, drive away depression, and there's instructions on how to use it for those purposes in the book. It has a really pretty purple flower on it, but I wouldn't touch it without gloves. Mint. Mint is for clarity. Now there's all kinds of mint. There's spearmint, there's peppermint. Did you know that there's a plant that's chocolate mint and it smells a little bit like chocolate mint? Um, now, of course we know mint's used in toothpaste and, and things like that. It probably covers up the taste of all the chemicals in that toothpaste. <coughs> but mint is also used to relieve headaches, it's used for um, relaxation, and there, I mean, it just has a, a lot of um, flavor to it, so you can put it, cook with it a lot, use it in teas and things like that, um, and you can flavor teas with it where you're using another herb that doesn't taste that great to make it taste better. Uh, mint can be used um, spiritually for clarity as well. Let's talk about mugwort. Mugwort is used for intuition. And I actually acquired some mugwort oil, a big old bottle of it. And my husband and I use it when we're, not every day, but occasionally when we're doing a meditation or something where we're trying to really, we need a lot of intuition. And uh, it really helps you to journey on, in your meditations. Suppose there's a recipe in here, an infusion for treating candida parasites and worms. So I didn't realize that you could ingest mugwort. So you might want to check with your doctor before you ingest any mugwort. Because I've heard there it can have bad side effects as well if you ingest it. Alright, mustard. Yeah, you can put it on food or... You can use it to have faith. Um, if you have faith, small as a mustard seed, yada, yada, yada. Um, it was, that's a, a saying from the Bible, I believe. Um, mustard 
good for respiratory relief, muscle relief, arthritis relief. And you can make a poultice out of mustard. Um, and I believe there's a, well, there's a recipe for massage oil, but I bet you could also find a mustard recipe as well. Um, a little mustard can work a whole lot of magic. They're considered powerful guardians of protection from both physical and spiritual harm. And you can find mustard seed just at the grocery store. All right, nettle, caution. And you should use caution if you're handling nettle because that will pokey poke you. It's really got a lot of sharp points on it. And wear gloves if you're handling nettle. But nettle is really good for you. Um, you can make a soup out of it. Uh, it's good for purifying the blood, excessive acid, and gout. And in, in Celtic lore, nettle is the threshold guardian between life and death, growing near the dead. And you can use it for protection. Nutmeg, we're to the ends. And nutmeg is used for luck. And who doesn't need more luck? We all do. But I say you make your own luck, right? But it doesn't hurt to sprinkle a little nutmeg on there. Put it, make a charm out of it. Carry it with you in your pocket. Bring you luck. You can also put it on food. It's it's delicious and it goes really good in those um, kind of like cinnamon ginger nutmeg type recipes for gingerbread and things like that. Olive. You've heard of the olive branch for peace? Well, or you put the olive in your martini, that's me. Um, or you can use olive oil. And olive oil, it really has a lot of good properties to it. It's a healthy type, considered a healthy type oil. Um, but did you know it's really also good for your skin and, and you can use olive oil as a base for lotions and creams and stuff. And you can use it to clean furniture. Um, oh, remove paint, wow. Huh. Oh, if you mix it with lemon juice to remove paint uh, and anything sticky, you know, and, and also it's good for um, polishing stainless steel. I don't know if you knew that. It's kind of an expensive way to polish stainless steel, though. All right, onion. Woo! For tears. Oh, and that's what it says for tears. I was just making that up. Yeah. Who gets tears when they cut up an onion? Well, and look how far away the cat's really far away. Um, but there's actually, it's actually good for soothing burns, believe it or not. Even though you would think onion would burn worse, um, supposedly it's good for burns. And it's really good for seasoning your meal. Uh, onions are pretty easy to grow as well. So think about that and you can use like the little shoots coming out of them. Uh, and they're good, they're easy to regenerate. So you're always gonna have some onion on hand. You can use it in your uh, spells as well. All right, parsley. Well, parsley, not so delicious. Mostly used for a garnish, right? But did you know it represents death? I didn't either. Um, but it says that It represents death and means a forerunner of death. And British folklore considers it bad luck to transplant this herb. Uh-oh, that's how I grew it. That's how I grew it, transplanting it. So that's not good. It says, wear me as a garland around your neck when feasting to ward off intoxication. Hmm. Well, there's a lot of information in here about parsley. That's all I'm going to say about parsley. I don't really like it. All right, patchouli. Does anybody like the smell of patchouli? Again, it's a little strong for me. I'm not big on uh, patchouli smell, but it, it's used in perfumes, and a lot of people like the smell of patchouli incense or patchouli oil. Um, this, you can see some incense sticks here with it. However, um, you can anoint your doors and windows with it as a magical defense to repel negative influences. And 
this book also says, uh, use me in spells and rituals to attain the spiritual growth and mastery of self you've been seeking. And did you know it's good for fighting athletes fit ex eczema and dermatitis? So who knew patchouli had so many uses? I actually have some patchouli oil. Now I know rose is like spectacular, but rose oil, super expensive. So it's cheaper just to grow a few roses in your garden um, and use this symbolically than to use it uh, as a medicinal herb. But if you can get your hands on some rose hips, that's really good for like menstrual pain. Uh, rose is really good for your skin, rose oil. So if you get a uh, lotion or cream with rose oil in it, that's why it's in there. It's not just for the scent. Um, and of course it represents love. And so it's really good for romantic spells and love spells. Good to have some rose on hand. Roses are beautiful. And you know, I like camellias too. And, and I know those don't have the same connotation, but they're very similar looking to rose and they're a lot easier to grow. All right, rosemary. Oh, this is, you know what? I believe rosemary is my favorite herb. Um, it, it has a little, it has a very strong scent. And it reminds me a lot of like the Christmas tree smell, uh, but it's not exactly the same smell. It, it grows so easily in the garden. And you know, I, I love having an herb garden, but quite honestly, I'm not a top-notch gardener. So I need something that's not gonna just die after one season. And rosemary is kind of eternal. It grows and grows and grows for years and it's really hard to kill it. So I love it, but it is really a strong herb for healing. And it is good for so many things. It has a lot of medicinal, like antibacterial properties, anti-inflammatory properties. If you use rosemary oil, you need to dilute it because it's a hot oil. It can burn you if um, it's too strong. But I put it in the bath with the kids. You know, just a couple of drops of rosemary in a big bath of water that's not gonna uh, burn them. But um, it, it has, it has a tendency to banish toxic vibes. And I really encourage you to try some rosemary. And it's good to cook with too, but again, you just have to use a little tiny bit or you know, it's too overwhelming of a flavor. Sage, we were saging some new crystals tonight to purify them, um, cleanse them. And sage, you can grow really easily in the garden and hang it up to dry yourself, or you can buy little bundles of, of pre-dried sage for burning. Um, it has a protection property to it. Um, and, and usually it's a white sage that's used for that. There's something called clary sage that is really has a lot of medicinal properties to it. And so I encourage you to look up more about clary sage as well as regular sage. This is a very important um, herb for magic rituals. All right, salt. Salt. What can I say about salt? It is so valuable. We all need some salt in our diet. The ocean is salty. Um, salt is represents earth. It is an earth element. And um, we use it for protection. I, I make protection powder using salt. And it has a lot of cleansing properties. Um, remember earlier we talked about a recipe with salt and lemon that is, is for cleaning. Um, but you, you can use it to ward off uh, all kinds of, of colds and fevers. Um, so usually <clears throat> you, you can also use it to, to absorb negative energies. And it used to be used as a religious offering. So those are some of the properties of salt. Now seaweed. Hmm. I've eaten like seaweed and in, in, uh, like sushi kind of Japanese food. Um, I like that. Oh, it's a little, it's a little pack of green seaweed. I don't know. It tastes good. I'm not sure if that's the same seaweed they're talking about here. But um, 
the, the term that they're using for it is prediction. And I'll just read you the little poem. Oceans abound with the magic of sea. Chaos of storms rules your destiny. I'll forecast the weather, set sail, begin. Your future awaits the sea which within. This magic is worked with harm to none, so mote it be, there it is done. All right, so I can see using seaweed um, when you're doing, using the water element uh, for magic. And so this is all about um, all about weather, elements, spirits of water, um, causing storms, using the chaotic forces of nature, this kind of thing. And there's a recommended recipe in here for pesto using seaweed. Interesting. Hmm. All right, St. John's wort, dispirited. Well, St. John's wort is known for being used for depression. Um, and I have not used it for that purpose, but, um, you can get a tincture of St. John's wort or like the little capsules, um, for that purpose. But did you know it's also good, um, for tired muscles and back pain? There's a recommended recipe in here to make that. Interesting. And there's a picture of the flower. It's beautiful. Sugar, you my sugar. All right, so there's a lot of pictures of candy canes, a pink pig, some sugar cubes, sweetness. Okay, well here they've got a recipe for sugar scrub. And it says, sprinkle me in nature to summon the elementals or burn a sugar cube to communicate with the spirits you wish to invoke. Huh, I've never heard that. Well, I'm sure you get plenty of sugar in your diet, um, but I didn't really realize you could use it for all kinds of sugary charms and candy spells. That's something to really look into, how exciting. Tea tree, mm, tea tree oil. This is really good for your scalp and you've probably seen a lot of shampoo products using tea tree oil. Um, so this is, they, they call it, they're using it for binding spell for magic and uh, it helps to banish negative vi vibes of those who vex you. And um, it, it is used as an astringent and insect repellent and a deodorant so this has a multi-purpose this is tea tree is good for things like hot spots and if you dilute it properly you can use it on hot spots for like pets and stuff but you should consult your vet before using anything like that on your pet all right time courage so time is another herb it's a little bit hard to grow. The leaves are really, really tiny and they dry out very easily on the plant. And so somewhere that's really hot, like Houston, um, it's it's tough to grow thyme, but I've managed to grow uh, little patches of thyme here and there. I try to find a shady spot for it so it doesn't get killed by the sun. It's really good for infections. Um, it has antibacterial properties. It's really good for cleaning. And um, it is good for getting, like you can put it into, you can put thyme essential oil into a spray bottle with some water. You spray it on plants that have fungus and it kills the fungus, things like that. So this has a, recommend, a recommended recipe for a vapor rub um, to clear the sinuses. Exciting, and it represents courage. So that's interesting. And it says that fairies love to work with time. Huh. Love that. All right. Turmeric. Oh, I can't say enough about turmeric. It's one I've recently learned a lot about. And turmeric is a yellow, um, it's a yellow colored herb that makes everything it touches yellow. <laughs> And if you use it, I use it a lot in cooking. It has a delicious flavor. And it is it is touted as having properties that are so healing 
that they're looking in to see if it can be maybe a cancer fighting agent. It says antioxidant um, properties. And it helps to boost your immune system and lift your mood. So they're saying in this book that my magical power can be utilized to remove black magic and will lift curses. So that's exciting. And we're almost to the end, you guys. Witch Hazel? Sensitivity. So Witch Hazel, I mean, this has been around forever, putting uh, like a little Witch Hazel tincture out there um, that you use as an astringent on your face. It's good for clearing acne, tightening pores, and maintaining pH balance. And they have a, a recommended recipe here for making some toner for your skin. But... Um, it's, it says it's used for it's used for emotional um, healing in spiritual work. Very interesting. All right, and this is the last card, y'all. We're almost to the end of our time together. Yero. Now, yero is something I, I know we've got to have some yero growing around here somewhere. But I have been looking for it and I haven't really come across it. But I've heard a lot of good stuff about yero. Um, it says, harvest the yero leaves only, not the flowers. And hang them up to dry or use a dehydrator. And once the yero leaves are dry... Place them in an herb grinder and make a fine powder. And you can use the powder for nosebleeds or wounds. Interesting. Well, I know there's a lot of, um, of healing properties to yarrow, um, including it's good for bruises, arthritis, measles. And you can use it in an amulet to protect against evil. So they, that's why it's termed expulsion at the bottom. So this is the end of our deck. I've really enjoyed our time together today. Thank you so much for tuning in to learn about this Oracle deck. And I'll see you next time when we open a new, we unbox a new Oracle deck.